All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Toolkit RCM60 Dual Smart Charger. I've had this for about a month, maybe a little bit more than a month, and I've been using it uh, pretty much on a daily basis. I've uh, replaced using the, uh, the my old charger here. This is the uh, ISDT D2 charger, and now pretty much exclusively using the M6D charger. I think this is a lot smaller and lighter than the uh, ISDT D2 charger, but this one doesn't have an internal power supply. Um, you have to plug in a battery or use a power supply with an XD60 connector, but dual channels, so you can charge two batteries at the same time. Um, they have a fan in here, but it's very quiet. It only comes on when you first power it on, and if you're charging like a really big battery or, or charging a battery at very high amps, uh, for a lot of my micro batteries that I fly, um, I hardly ever hear the fan or the air flowing through this and it does seem like it has a better cooling system in internally, like maybe a better metal heat sink inside, something like that. So it, I almost never hear the fan on normally charging, even on charging two batteries. So just taking a look at the uh, charger here, uh, they've gone back to the scroll wheel and button for the functions. You got a 2.4 inch screen here, it's color. Uh, dual channels, of course, two XD60 outputs with your uh, six um, S balance leads here. On this side, you got your fan, and on this side, you got your input power. XD60 uh, voltage range is 7 to 28 volts, and then you have a USB port here. It's uh, 2.1 amps at 5 volts, so you can charge a USB device or smartphone, something like that, through that output. Or you can also use it for firmware upgrades, and it comes with this USB cable for firmware upgrades. You also get the quick start guide here, but there's also a full manual on on the toolkitrc.com website where you can download that. And just to take a look at any of the specs here that I have possibly missed here, so 7 to 28 volts, 30 amps max, all your typical battery types here, LiPo, high volt, Life feed, lithium ion, one to six cells, uh, nickel metal hydride, one to 16 cells, and lead, one to 10 cells. You have your charge power here. So you can do 500 watts in synchronous mode, which I'm not gonna be able to show you because you need a Y cable. So you can combine the two channels into a single output and then use channel one here to uh, do synchronous charging and it will do a full 500 watts, I believe, at uh, 25 amps is the max for synchronous charging or you get um, in the dual mode obviously in the standard dual mode here you get uh, 250, wa uh, 250 watts per channel at 15 amps and that's sh shown here so it says it's 500 watts total um, for the whole charger or 250 watts per channel and it's 15 amps per channel all right, so let's go ahead and power it up and let's go show you the settings. So long press the scroll wheel here. I'll get into the settings here. So you have your input settings. If you go in here, power selection, power type, you can change that from adapter to battery. Max power you can adjust here, max current you can adjust here. So 560 watts and 30 amps. Voltage range is seven to 28 volts. Under security settings here, you have your basically your safety settings here. So safety time, safety capacity, and internal temperature, external temperature. I wouldn't mess with any of these in case you uh, want to uh, live dangerously and uh, generally you, they program these chargers to be very safe so I would try and leave it in that mode. And then there's a, and down here additional settings you have synchronous mode so if you want to use both channels at the same time and charge one big battery for example you have to turn that on, change that from off to on. There is continuous work mode so what that does is basically as soon as the battery is done charging, you can unplug it and plug in a new one and will retain the previous settings. Instead of having to manually go in and use the buttons to charge or start the charge again, it'll just automatically start charging. I am not really um, keen on using that feature just in case you um, accidentally plug in a different type of battery or a wrong cell, something like that. You don't want to cause any sort of problems, so I would recommend leaving that off, but you can turn that on if you have like a whole bunch of the same batteries in a row that you want to charge, you can do that. Okay, so then there's work completed. Um, at the end, it'll either stop or you can change it to trickle charge. Um, I'm not sure where you would want to use that for lipo batteries, maybe for like a different type of battery, nickel metal hydrate or lead acid perhaps. But yeah, I would just uh, leave that as end battery selection, 
on or off backlight. I can change the backlight level on the screen. Pretty easy to do there. The buzzer is the sound of the buzzer. I think uh, if you want a more high pitched buzzer sound, you can change that there. And then you go back to default settings and change your language here. So to exit, you hit the channel button here. That exits out. So you get two channels. So you can go back and forth between the two channels. You can see this is channel one selected and then channel two selected. I think when channel one selected, it's like a yellow color box. And then over here, it's a blue colored box if you have channel two selected. All right, so I'm going to uh, show you demonstrate some charging here. And I have the XT60 to XT30 adapter because I mostly use XT30 batteries. You can easily make these yourself or you can buy them um, at various stores, even Amazon. Uh, let me know if you need a link for one of those. Let's go ahead and plug in one of these batteries here. And it shows your voltage there for each cell. Total voltage. This is the voltage of the input battery, which is a six cell battery here. And if you want to uh, see what the internal resistance of the battery is before you actually charge it, you can just long press the exit button. And I'll test the internal resistance really quickly. And then it'll show you that this is what it thinks the internal resistance is of the two cells. That way you can see if you're, if there's like, say for example, if you've crashed and you've dented your battery and you want to see if one of the cells is damaged, then before you charge it, you probably want to test the internal resistance. So a lot of charges you have to actually start to charge to see the internal resistance numbers. You probably don't want to do that. Here you can actually test the internal resistance before you charge it to see if maybe one of the cells is damaged. And what, the way you know this is if like, say if it's a, a multi-cell battery and the um, one of the cells is damaged and the internal resistance on one of the cells will be a lot higher than the other ones. Okay, so to start a charge, you go ahead and just press the scroll wheel and then you can get this battery selection window. Um, I have some presets already put in here, but then if you want to make your own new uh, new preset, you can just give me some blank ones here. Or if you want to delete something, you can just say, for example, you want to delete this one, you can just long press that selection and it'll just get rid of it. Um, I'll show you these here. So if you want to create a new one, go in here, click on that, and then you can select your battery type. So there's LiPo, high volt, uh, LiFi, lithium ion, milky metal hydride, lead, and then there's these two other ones here called power for power supply and UAV bat. So if you hit power, you can uh, basically turn this into a variable voltage power supply and uh, it'll output a consistent voltage and current based on these settings here, which you can change. So voltage will range from one volt to maximum of 28 volts. Put things in back. And you can change your current here, uh, ranges from 0.5 amps to 15 amps maximum. And then you can see that new one is uh, the last remembered uh, setup is going to be remembered here in that slot. Uh, if you want to create another one here, go in here and then say like, I want to change this one to UEV bat. You can select one of these drone models here. So I think these are for like DJI uh, drones like Mavic 2, Mavic S, Phantom, and Inspires. And you can here and then adjust the voltage based on the model and then the current you can adjust here as well. I think you're going to need some sort of XT60 to that type of battery adapter. I'm not exactly sure where you would get that. So um, possibly you probably need to get some look into that as to where those are. Because I don't actually um, have any kind of external type of uh, battery chargers for DJI drones. Okay, so we exit back out here and then you can see that that is now saved. So if you want to get rid of that, just long press and I'll get rid of that. Long press, get rid of those. You can save those for something else. I typically just have been using these three here. So I have uh, LiPo, high volt and lithium ion. And I just change, basically just go into here, just select the item and then go into the here and you can then adjust your charge current and end voltage. But for example, for high volt, that's going to be 4.35 and LiPo is going to be 4.2. You can change, uh, easily leave the cells as auto and you know, obviously mode is going to be charged and you can do discharge and storage charge. Those are also functions built in as well as pretty typical of all these smart chargers. 
Okay, so now we'll go ahead and back into charge mode. And voltage, you can adjust that up and down as low as 4.15 and as, low, as high as 4.25 if you want to just have a slightly different setting, but I'm going to leave it at 4.2 volts. And we'll charge at 1 amp here. This is a 450 milliamp hour 2S LiPo, and uh, that'll charge at about 2C. So then we just go down here, select Start, and hit OK, and then I'll start charging. And then it just shows you your amps going in here, um, amps coming out of the input battery, voltage of the battery you're charging, and there's the watts here as well. And then if you turn the scroll dial here, you get your individual cell voltages. You can see it charging each cell. Total milliamp hours put in the battery right there, and then total time charging right there. Scroll one more time, and you get the internal, the current internal resistance of the cells. So if you want to stop the charge, go into, just press the scroll wheel. You can adjust the current up or down here if you want. And then you just select stop if you want to stop it. And then I want to show you another function here where you can charge both um, batteries at the same time, if it's the same type. So I have another uh, 2S450 here. And go ahead and plug this in. Okay, so go ahead and go back into our charge menu, or battery selection menu, select the same one. And then here, instead of um, setting start to start channel one, you can click on this little channel button here. If you press that, you can then uh, uh, change it. So you can do channel one or channel two, or select dual for both, and then hit start. And I'll say charge uh, both channels to 8.4. So obviously you want to do this with batteries that are the same, not different. Otherwise you'll have some problems. Hit OK, and then I'll start charging up both batteries at the same time. You know, I guess just save a little bit of time if you have two, two, two batteries of the same type, and you know you're just going to charge them both at the same time, um, then this will save you a little bit of time. Okay, go ahead and we'll start, or go ahead and we'll stop that charge. You can see here's a little safety message that came up here. If you don't actually totally stop the charge and you just pull one of the balance ports out, it'll give you an error. Okay, so one thing I do want to point out in terms of like uh, issues I found, for the most part, I didn't really find any problems. But um, when I tried to do, I, I did the firmware upgrade, by the way. So you just do the firmware upgrade in the back here. You plug in the cable into the back of the charger and the other side into your PC and just follow the instructions that come with the firmware um, download. It's pretty simple. You just basically run a batch, like a batch file, and then that'll copy a file to the charger. It just shows up as like a USB drive, and that'll upgrade it. So I did that, and I went from version one of the firmware to, I think, uh, 1.01. So I'm going to show you that. 1.01 here. And you're supposed to be able to go into this setting here, if we change that to, say, discharge or storage charge, then you're supposed to be able to have this uh, extra menu item called recycle, which lets you take a, basically it takes like, if you have a fully charged battery at the end of the day, you want, to, you want to get rid of the charge and then discharge it into the input battery. You can do that with that mode. And they actually have a video that shows how that's done. And I'm not sure why it doesn't show up on mine because it doesn't show up in either discharge mode or Sorry, store charge mode or discharge mode. So just a discharge mode there and then store charge mode doesn't show up on either one of them. So yeah, I'm not sure how they did that video. I, I thought maybe it was, wasn't part of version 1.0 firmware, but part of 1.01 .01 firmware. So I did that and apparently it's not, doesn't work on my charger for some reason. It just a, it's just a basically a quick way to, if you have some full batteries, you want to just dump the current or the the power out of that battery into an input battery. You could do that, and I think that's the maximum uh, discharge current available on this charger. But unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate that to you in this video. Maybe I'll get a feature firmware update. I can show you that. It's not a feature that I'm going to be particularly using. I 
almost never use a discharge function anyway. Um, but if you're wondering why I didn't share that, that's because it doesn't work on my particular charger. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Overall, I like the charger. I've actually been using it um, pretty much for the last, uh, every day for the last month. And all the f functions work. I like the scroll wheels better than the touch screens and the buttons work and everything, you know. Basically, it's, it's been working without any unusual issues or problems or anything failing. So uh, that's why I've been using it pretty much every day. I'm going to continue to use it. So I can recommend this charger if you're interested in checking it out. It's a pretty reasonable price. And if you look into, you know, dual channel charging, uh, especially if you have like smaller batteries like like here or like the, like these ones for micros that I use a lot this charger is perfect for that and you can it's small enough to take out into the field if you want to do a multi charge uh, multi battery charging in the field as well anyway that's enough rambling for this video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one